United States Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman. Shalom, Chag Sameach. Shalom, Yoni Chag Sameach. I'm sorry you wore a tie. It wasn't this. Yeah, I, I was ready for a serious interview, but we're out here near the sukkah. And we're also, we have all these, uh, you know, utilities for the kids. How Your family's here this year, right? Well, thank God we have most of the family. We have uh, four of the five kids. We have four of the seven grandchildren, and we're trying to uh, make them as happy as possible. And so we got lots of toys, and it's great to have little kids running around. So let's begin with news. We're talking, of course, about President Donald Trump, his statements yesterday regarding the Palestinian state. People in Israel are even def defining it as a zigzag. Uh, what does he really want? And that's our first question. What does President Trump want when he sees the big deal, the final deal here in the, uh, in the region? Well, he wants an agreement. I think he's much less concerned about the structure than he has, is about the agreement. He, he spoke about it uh, several times yesterday. And uh, you know, what he said is really consistent with what he's been saying all along, which is whatever the parties can agree to, uh, he will support. Uh, the reality is I think he's seen uh, very little support on either side for a one-state solution. So I think his observations uh, are correct. But you know, ultimately, this is about an agreement. It's not about the form of the agreement. It's about what the agreement would be. So when we saw when uh, President Trump was elected, uh, you know, celebrations in the right in Israel, yep. that's the end of the Palestinian state, that's the end of uh, concessions in the land of Israel. Those were too early, those celebrations? Uh, well, I'd like to think that the celebrations that uh, were going on were uh, celebrations for a president who uh, has been and will continue to be uh, the greatest friend Israel will ever have in the White House. And I also think that people right, left, and center also uh, desire an end to the conflict. So um, I don't think that um, the, uh, you know, I, I haven't heard anyone uh, yet tell me that they're disappointed with the president's observations. But if they are, I would suggest that they stay tuned and uh, to pay attention. Because I think, I think the president, uh, very much in contrast to his predecessors, recognizes very clearly that where Palestinian autonomy and Israeli security intersect. We err on the side of Israeli security. And uh, I, I think people just need to pay attention and to listen. Half a million residents of Judea and Samaria, do they have what to worry regarding their own homes, uprooting of settlements? Well, look, I, uh, I don't want to get into the details of a, uh, of a peace proposal. I think we're, we're still months away, as the president has indicated. Uh, but I'll tell you, I've, I've been very clear on this personally, that um, I don't think that it's reasonable uh, to expect any, uh, any agreement to, to depend upon uh, forcing people to leave their homes. That, that applies to Arabs as well as, as Jews. I think the idea of forced population transfers uh, is not a pathway to peace. The people who say the loudest and clearest that I America now stands with Israel are the Palestinians. They see your, you and the, the administration as good friends of Israel and they say you guys are not neutral anymore. We heard of many tensions uh, with the Palestinian Authority. How do you convince them Yeah, we're still here and we'll st we're still neutral in this whole negotiation? Well, it's interesting because I think that um, those that felt that the Obama administration was neutral I think we're, we're misreading the circumstances. I think, unfortunately, that administration uh, was very much uh, on the side of the Palestinians. Look, I think uh, neutrality is really the wrong uh, way of looking at it. The right way to look at it is, can we be helpful? Uh, you know, sometimes you have, uh, you have uh, two people you're trying to bring together. You're friends with one, you're less friendly with the other. It doesn't mean that you're not uh, in a position to, uh, to be constructive and to play a role. Uh, we can play a role here, uh, a very important role. I think we're the only country in the world that can play a constructive role, and we intend to do so. Um, it's not about uh, our relationship with Israel versus the Palestinians. Israel's a sovereign nation. It's a criti critical ally of the United States. It always will be. Um, that doesn't mean that we can't, I'm sorry, that doesn't mean that we can't be helpful uh, to achieving a peace agreement. When we talk about the Palestinian issue, we talk about the conflict, and we're also relating, of course, to terror. Uh, just a few days ago, Ari Fold an American citizen was killed. I understand that you met the family. We saw in your sukkah uh, a decoration, something in his memory. How do you look at this loss and the whole issue of terror in the, in the region? Uh, it's the challenge of our time. Uh, it is an absolute bar to uh, peaceful coexistence. It has to be eradicated. When I think of Ari and his family, I, because uh, I got a chance to really, my wife and I spent over an hour with them yesterday in their sukkah. Um, I'm also just overcome with the, with the sadness of the moment and of course I'm struck by 
the great accomplishments that Ari was able to, to achieve in his lifetime. Um, but the bigger picture is that terror has to be um, eradicated. There's no place for it uh, here or any place else in the world. Let's talk about Iran. What is the next stage regarding Iran? How do you see us uh, developing? Well, look, the sanctions are ramping up. Uh, I don't think we're even at the halfway point in terms of the sanctions. They're going to increase significantly in the near future, and then I believe there are additional sanctions that are uh, in place. Uh, they're starting to have a desired effect. We think they're going to have an even greater effect. I think, you know, when Europe realizes that they have a very stark choice, do they want to deal with an $18 trillion economy in the United States or a uh, an economy that's a tiny fraction of that in Iran, I think they'll make the right choice. I think the uh, businesses in Europe are already beginning to make the right choice. Uh, and I think this is the, the right path. Um, with regard to Iran's encroachment in Syria, um, it's a very sensitive issue. Obviously, uh, we're both familiar with what happened the last few weeks with the Russians. But uh, um, you heard the prime minister say yesterday, he met with the president on this. He got everything he wanted. And I think, you know, I, I'm anticipating your question, but I think on that issue, it's so sensitive, we'll leave it at that. Regarding the embassy move, then it was big headlines. What's going to happen? Now it's the routine. There's the embassy in Jerusalem. By the way, tell us how it works nowadays. Well, yeah, it is a routine. We have an office there. We have uh, operations there. I'm there probably uh, two-thirds of my time. Um, we're breaking ground in another, uh, probably another couple of weeks. We're going to, it's going to be a little ugly for uh, for five, six months while we break around and uh, begin phase two, we'll end up with a, a much bigger platform on the uh, one that's completed. Um, and then we have more to do. So it's, it's a constant process of transitioning and building. Um, but, uh, you know, we're, our embassy is in Jerusalem and it hopefully always will be. Looking back at the, you know, the big headlines back then, the whole, it's gonna be the, there's going to be a world war if you move the embassy. How do you look back at it? Well, I'm grateful that there wasn't, and uh, needless to say, uh, um, many of us in the Trump administration were skeptical about those predictions, uh, but none of us are clairvoyant, so we were very gratified that the uh, reaction across the world was muted. And uh, thank God uh, we've uh, maintained uh, you know, good security and the Jerusalem embassy, and we have the right people there, and it's a, it's a wonderful, beautiful place. Ambassador Friedman, you've been in Israel a lot before you came into office, but tell us about this time in Israel. I mean, how has it been? Well, it's, you know, it's, it's an amazing uh, country, and it's, you know, from my early days to now, I mean, it's really grown into a first world country. And, um, you know, I see people living here, uh, you know, the happiness quotient, whatever that means. I don't know how they mark it, but it's one of the highest in the world, and I think people uh, find great satisfaction living here. I think the love that the Israelis have for the United States is heartwarming. I see it every day. Um, uh, all the other ambassadors kind of lament that they don't get the same love and affection that, that I do. And it's, I think it's not because of me, it's because of the country that I represent. And um, it's really the greatest job in the world and I'm deeply grateful that I have it. How do you really balance? Because you are one of ours, a Jew, you're familiar, you have a, a home here, and you, you also try to be, and you are, the representative of the biggest, uh, the biggest nation in the world. How do you balance? Well, you know, your question presumes some conflict, that you have to balance between sides. Unfortunately, I haven't seen one. Um, mm -hmm. The interests of the United States and Israel on the matters that I care about are, uh, are deeply aligned, you know, aligned uh, completely. And so I fortunately haven't really felt the need to balance. My job is to represent the United States. That's who I represent. I am the president's representative in Israel. That's always going to be my job as long as I'm the ambassador. But fortunately, uh, both the president's uh, goals for Israel uh, and the nations as a whole and mine are all completely in sync. We will see different occasions where you are with the Kippah without. Can you tell us a bit about that? Well, I wear a kippah at home, and I wear it when I'm uh, eating so that I can, you know, say the blessing over the meal. Um, and when I come, obviously, into synagogues or, or religious sites. But I never wore a kippah professionally. And I practiced law for 35 years. I went to court all the time. I tried cases. I didn't wear one. My perspective is that when I'm uh, representing either a client, and actually, in this case, the United States, uh, I want people to uh, focus on what I'm saying and not what I'm wearing. And so I think that's the best way to serve my task. But uh, look, I think it's a personal decision. I, I wouldn't second guess anybody else's choices. 
we uh, were with your daughter when she made Aliyah, immigrated to Israel, and you know there's a concept, Noar Ole Lifnei youth move, and then their parents come. Are you next? I am uh, an American citizen representing the United States right now, and I'm going to leave it at that. Yesterday we saw you at the Kotel, at the priestly blessing. That, that's yeah. a moving moment. It's incredibly moving, and um, it's the third time I did it. I, I was there uh, last Sukkot, that was their Pesach, and now this is the third time. Um, You're a Kohen. I'm a Kohen. It's one of the great perks. I think maybe the greatest perk of being the, the ambassador to Israel, that I get to uh, participate. Did you in, raise your hands? Of course. I wow. got, they, they gave me a really great place to do it, and uh, I was able to participate in the Birkat Kohanim uh, in a way that, uh, you know, was, uh, was, was, was very easy and uh, uh, didn't have to fight the crowds uh, as much as everybody else. And so I said, that's probably one of the best perks I have as ambassador. U.S. Ambassador to Israel, David Friedman, thank you very much. And of course, Chag Sameach. Well, Chag Sameach to you. And I want to wish all of your listeners, all of your readers, Chatima Tova, Shana Tova, Chag Sameach. Enjoy the beautiful holiday of Sukkot. There's no better place to spend Sukkot than in Israel. It's just... Uh, I used to come here all the time before I was the ambassador, and uh, it, uh, it's a wonderful place to be, this time of year especially.